Uh, Jimmy, I wanted to start with you first. This, uh, this season, you're joining the writer's room. How did that opportunity come about and how has your work behind the scenes made you a stronger actor? Oh, I, I mean, it's, it's all a lot of credit to Greg Daniels. He's so open to uh, our pitches and, and, and to talk to the actors. Uh, even season one, you know, the little arc uh, of me and Tony, you know, maybe becoming something that was just us going to writer's room and talking about it. So season two, you know, I just thought maybe I would take a chance to see. It. And then I sent him a couple of scripts of mine. And then lo and behold, I was in the room. So it was a great experience. And I learned so much from Greg Daniels and Steve Carell every day in the room, uh, 24, 26 weeks Um and it was just great to be able to write an episode that's quite close to my heart, you know, of yep. uh, the Chinese delegation coming in and then having my dad being one of the guest stars. So it was a very special experience. And being in the writer's room for that long, I, I didn't have to study that much as an actor. I knew the scripts, all seven of the scripts, very well, you know, what happens before and after that. So that really informed um, the character and acting a lot. Not only did I know Chan's arc, I started to learn everyone else's also. Yeah, and Diana, this is the longest that you've lived with a character. Has anything surprised you about the experience? What's been the biggest takeaway for you? Um, I, I think it's just seeing where a character can go when you have more time with them. Um, there's so many different avenues, especially at that in like that character's age. Because I feel like when you're you're playing, because I, I mean, I'm I'm 24 and Aaron is 17, 18, um, and even at my age, I feel like things change so quickly at such a different pace than they do, I think, the older you get. Um, so playing someone in high school who has all of these things just kind of thrown at her, oh God, all these weird curveballs being thrown at her and how she has to adjust and how she has to work through them and how she matures is something that's very, that was like new and exciting um, to explore during season two. Tony, uh, in addition to the work that you've done on screen, you're also a musician. If you had to pick a song that best describes your character's journey in the series, what would it be and why? Um, I mean, it's very tempting to say it's the end of the world by R.E.M., but I won't <laughs> say that. Um, no, she's going through a lot. Maybe like, um, I don't know, maybe something grungy and... Uh, uh, frightening sounding, maybe something by garbage. <laughs> Has anyone brought up garbage yet in a junket? I aim to be the first. Um, yeah, either that or like, um, let's go get stoned. You know, see, she's she's a little nihilistic. She's like, let's let's get, let's give up a little bit. Ben, your character always says what's on his mind, which creates a lot of really hysterical moments. Do you have a favorite moment uh, of Eptonis in season one or two? And as an actor, is it a challenge to, to keep him grounded? Oh, great question. I think it's one of the things that I had a conversation with with Greg at the beginning was to make sure that it didn't feel like John Ralphio, another character I played from Parks and Recreation, where it didn't feel like it felt too cartoonish, where the goal is to try to make this character grounded, to show you that, you know, he's overcompensating for whether it's a lack of a father figure or or whatever it is. So I'm happy that you asked the question. It was definitely something we've been trying to play to make sure that he stays grounded, but also let him to have his big energy moments because I think it's a fun character to throw a little energy into scenes. Um, and what scene am I, I really, there's a scene that made me, I, I mean, it, I'm tangentially involved, but there's a scene in Jimmy O. Yang's episode, which by the way, for someone who's writing on a television show for the first time, his episode is unbelievably funny and well-crafted and understands the characters and it was great. So we were all really excited to do his episode. But there's one where Steve Crow's trying to pick up some tofu. And it's really, really funny. And then it's just me on one side, Diana on another side, and Steve trying to pick up some very loose, uh, floppy tofu. <laughs> and it just made us crack up. It was one of the scenes that just killed us. We thought it was so funny. Yeah, that's such a great scene in episode three. And then Jimmy and Tony, for you, there's an unexpected bond that forms at the end of season one between your two characters. What can you tease about that relationship heading into to season two? Ooh, I think uh, there'll be a lot of ebbs and flows in that uh, will they, won't they uh, relationship because they're both very capable people, uh, but they approach personal relationship not in the best way. You know, even though she's been on the moon, that's probably maybe not a great thing for a personal relationship. Uh, whereas for Chan, even though he's an amazing scientist, 
he might not be very good at reading people and how a relationship works because he just uh, 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 try to approach everything as a math problem. Uh, so we definitely see a lot of growth between the two and uh, a lot of ups and downs, as you see. Um, yeah, a lot of mis uh, miscommunicating, you know, people thinking they're being direct or being clear, but really like we see how, as Jimmy said, this scientist and this soldier just were never trained to speak the same language. So watching them figure it out and the amount that they are able to figure it out, I think is really sweet. There are these pe completely different people who figured out how to have a friendship and maybe more. Questions of the group. The first season establishes who these characters are and the various different dynamics between all of them. What can fans expect from this upcoming season? And how were you all able to kind of grow your bond as a cast heading into this new season? Um, I'll just answer the second part real quick. We grew our bond as a cast because we were only allowed to hang out with each other. So um, I don't even think we were allowed to hang out. With, I think they told us not to hang out when we weren't filming and we were like, I think all it took was Steve Carell being like, we get to go to dinner, right? And we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think our bond, it's its great. We're all such lovely people who get along really well. Otherwise uh, I could see it being a little, a little crazy making. Also basketball. I feel like we all really bonded over basketball. That's and cool. Playoffs were happening at that time. And it was a lot of like, it turns out we all just like each other which is great and enjoyed <laughs> spending time with one another. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly rare, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Ben and Jimmy it's talking also... to my first layup. Never done one before. And it's on camera and she nailed it. It's bad. It's bad, but thank you. 